Hey guys, it's Jason again for Newmark. Today we're talking about the Newmark Orbit and how it works with Tractor Pro 2. We put together three really awesome mappings for you. The first one is a transport with effects. The second one is all effects for all four decks. And then the third is a track prep tool, which will allow you to set your beat grids and all your hot cues before you go out and play your gig. The next tractor mapping we're going to talk about is the effects-based mapping called the Nebula. There's two versions. We have the two deck with transport controls of deck A and deck B, and then effects for deck A and deck B. The second is a four deck version, which will give you effects on all four decks, which is great to use with any other controller. All right, first we want to make sure that the orbit dongle is connected and the orbit is powered on. To get started, we want to make sure that the orbit is back to its factory settings. You can do this with the hardware or in the MIDI editor software. Next, inside a tractor, let's go ahead and load this TSI file. So preferences, controller manager, and then import, we'll find our file. Mine's on the desktop here, and we're going to look at the two deck version. Load it, and make sure that we load this file twice to ensure that all effect settings take effect. Now that we have our tractor map loaded, let's look at the hardware and see what the controls do inside of Tractor Pro 2. So at the top, we have our play and pause button. With the shift button, it will jump all the way back to the beginning of the track. Next to that is your sync. With the shift button engaged, it's going to set this deck to master. This one is already set to master, so it won't do anything. Below that is your loop on and loop off. We have our flux mode button. These two controls here will jump your loop size. Using shift plus these controls is going to Jump back or forward. Let's turn the flux mode off and we can see that. Jumping back just a half beat now. So we change the size to eight and we can actually jump back by eight or forward by eight. Uh, this button here is going to load the track that's selected, but it will only load the track if the deck is not playing. So K1 is going to be your volume controls. Shift plus K1 is going to be control your low end. And all these virtual knobs are going to be soft takeover. So that means until you cross that point in the software, it will take over the control. K2 is going to be your filter. K2 plus shift is going to be your key. K3 is going to be your crossfader. Let's turn sync off. Uh, and K3 plus shift is going to be your pitch fader. K4 is going to browse through your tracks. And K4 plus shift is going to browse through the tree. So let's load a track. And on the right side of the controls are your hot cues. So the hot cues are laid out just a little differently from the vertical mapping. And we have one through four on the inside and five through eight on the outside. The top accelerometers are going to control your filter for deck A and filter for deck B. Now pad bank 2 is pretty much mirrored the same as deck A. So it's going to be deck A on pad bank 1 and deck B on pad bank 2. The last pad banks are going to be for your effects. So on pad bank 3, you're going to have your effects for deck A. And pad bank 4, you're going to have your effects for deck B. Across the top, we're going to have your beat slicer momentary, a beat slicer toggle, your echo out toggle, and your echo out momentary. Below that, we're going to have your delay, a toggle filter. On the right side here, we're going to have a digital lo-fi, a reverb. And this next row here is going to be your beat master effect in all different increments. The very corner button here is going to be your stretch effect. Next is the gator on both sides. And then a quick turntable stop. All the pads on the left side are going to be controlled by the left bumper. So if you want to increase or decrease the parameter of the effect, press and hold the button you want to use, and then press the left bumper. You can see now in the software the delay T3 is increasing, decreasing when I move the accelerometer or the orbit. And the same goes for the right side of pads. So if we choose this pad here, we press the right bumper, and you can see now that the reverb is moving up and down inside the software. By default, all these effects are going to come in right around 40-50%. So if you want to increase the wet and dry, hold the pad you want to use, 
make sure we're on K4 and go ahead and move the encoder. You can see that the wet and dry is now increasing or decreasing. Across the top, we have our super combos. They're a combination of three different effects, which are great for transitions and big buildups. So on Padme 3, effects for Deke. K1, it's kind of like this super buildup, reverb type effect. Next is kind of like this transformer sound. And K3 is going to be your tape delay. I told you what all the effects are and how they work, but let's actually take a listen and see what they sound like. So Pad Bank 3 is our effects page for Deke. So your echo out. Filter. A lo fi. Beat slicer. Delay. Again, I'm using K4 to bring up the wet and dry. Toggle. Stretch. And that's the effects on the orbit nebula mapping. So first, let's jump into the MIDI editor and set our presets. Inside, first we want to retrieve all the information from the controller itself. So click Retrieve, and it says Retrieve Successful, which is great. And now we want to open up our preset, the Track Prepping tool. I have mine saved to the desktop. Orbit Track Prep, so go ahead and double click to load. And we can see that this K1 value changed to a relative, and this is necessary for the mapping inside Tractor to work properly. So go ahead and send that to the controller. And that's it, we can close out the editor and then open up Tractor. So in Tractor, go to your Preferences, and then Controller Manager, and select Import from the bottom. Find wherever you downloaded your file to, and double click on it. You want to leave all of these options here checked. Click OK to load, and you can see now the orbit has also lit up all the LEDs that correspond with this mapping inside the software. We can go ahead and close out the preferences. And let's take a look at the controls on the orbit and how they interact with Tractor Pro 2. For the track prepping tool, you'll notice that I have the orbit laid out in a vertical position. This is more effective inside the software when setting your beat grids and your hot cues. On the orbit, we have our eight hot cues across the top. This pad here will be your shift button. Pad next to that is going to be your left and your right. You can see inside the software we're moving left or right at a size of 32. Now we can change that size by holding down the shift button and changing the loop size. And now when we move, we're going to move it too. Next to that is your play pause button. And if you hold down the shift and press the play pause button, it's going to jump all the way back to the beginning of the track. Below the shift button, we have our cue type selector. So let's set a hot cue here. You can see that by default, it lit up as blue. This means it's a standard hot cue. Now you can use this selector button to cycle between all the different hot cues in the tractor software. And they also light up just the same as they do inside the software, so you know what type of hot cue it is. If you hold down shift and press that same pad, it's going to lock the grid. So we can see that it's locked, and now the grid is unlocked. Next to that is set your grid marker. With the shift button, it's going to delete the grid marker. Next pad here will cycle through your advanced panel. With the shift button engaged, it's going to cycle through your layout. And the last pad here is going to load the next track in the selected playlist. If you hold down the shift and press that same pad, it will load whatever song you have selected. So let's here shift, and it will load this track. As you can see here, K1 is going to cycle or scroll through your tracks. With the shift button, it's going to scroll through the tree. K2 
It's going to allow you to seek position in the track. K3 is going to zoom in or zoom out so you can get really close to the transients and set your beat grid really tight. K4 is going to be a jog turn. Now, with shift with the K4 is going to zoom in and get you real close so you can set that grid marker right on the downbeat. So set your grid marker. K4 with shift. We can see it's pretty close. Also, when you press shift and use K4, you can use this left and right button to move the grid marker left or right. Now I'm going to show you just how fast and quickly you can actually set your beat grid and your hot cues inside Tractor using this track prep tool. Let's choose this first track and load it to the deck. You can see that it doesn't have any hot cues or beat grid assigned to it yet. So let's go to the first downbeat here using K4. Hold down Shift and K4, we'll get in real close. And you can see that Tractor's auto grid is off just a little bit. So let's drop in our grid marker here and make sure it's on the downbeat. You can also scroll through the track just to make sure that all the other transients are lining up to this grid marker. It looks like they are. So I'm going to go ahead and lock in this grid. Hold down Shift and the button right below that locks it in. That way we can't delete it um, by accident. Now let's assign some hot cues. So we've got our first grid marker here. Let's go up. Let's set a hot cue. Looks like the music changes here. And then again at the breakdown. And then we want one at the drop. So say you set all of your hot cues and we determine that we want to just have it loop at the end. You can sign this hot cue here and change the type to loop. And now this track will auto loop every time it hits that point in the song inside a tractor. Once you set your beat grid and your, all your hot cues on your first track, press the corner bottom pad and it will load the next track in your playlist. That way you can continue prepping the rest of your tracks before your gig. That concludes this video overview of the Tractor Pro mappings for the Newmark Orbit. We had a lot of fun creating these mappings and hope you enjoy using them with your DJ sets. Until next time.